Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Be six for lunch, Billy Joe. Yeah, the way Charlie and Floyd eat, that's the same as eight. <laughs> oh, I hope there's some good looking young fellas for a change. <laughs> Did you hear that, Kate? You've got yourself a problem with that one. Nothing on her mind but boys. Yeah. Looks like I've gone and raised myself a normal, healthy girl. <laughs> This is Shady Rest. We're stopping here for lunch. It's nothing here but a water tower. Yeah, a water tower. Hey, fireman. I'm the conductor now. <laughs> this train's supposed to go through to Pixley. We figured on eating lunch there. Yeah, there. <laughs> boys, you never had a finer meal than Kate Bradley cooks. And that's the truth, boys. That's right. And today is spare ribs and sauerkraut day. Mashed potatoes, hot biscuits, I'll see you up there. <laughs> hey, did you hear that, Arthur? Yeah, I hate ribs and sauerkraut. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Charlie, if you could run that train as fast as you run for food, you'd really have something. Joe, you quit <laughs> riding me about my eating. I work hard, and there's a lot of me to feed. Uh, yeah, for, for a big man, Charlie's a very small eater. That's true. In one meal, you eat a small turkey, a small roast, and a small ham. <laughs> Hello there. Hi, Mrs. Brown. Welcome. Boys, you signal six for lunch. We had six. Well, two young fellas who want to go on into Pixley and eat. Well, don't worry, Kate. I'll go sell them a bill of goods. Well, come on, boys. Did you say young fellas, Floyd? Yeah, nice looking, too. <laughs> I hope those hicks eat fast. Got to make it into Pixley in time to case that bank before it closes. Yeah, closes. Hey, put that away, you jerk. Told you to keep both our guns out of sight. I'm sorry. Hey, boys. You're sure missing a good meal. Sauerkraut and spare ribs. All you can eat for 50 cents. <laughs> How about it? You coming up for lunch? No, no, we don't like spare ribs and sauerkraut. Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right there. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, wait a minute, Arthur. I thought you said you didn't like spare ribs and sauerkraut. That was before I saw the appetizer. <laughs> Billy, you should have been here sooner. I told your mother I was going to sell those boys a bill of goods. Just did. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Oh, Kate, that was wonderful. You're a wonderful, You're Kate. Thank you. Yeah, Finish up, everybody. The train leaves in five minutes. Surely I have another pie in the kitchen. Oh? Well, take your time, folks. Train leaves in half an hour. <laughs> Good thing there's only one more pie. You never would make it into Pixley. <laughs> don't forget, Uncle Joe, we don't stop here tomorrow. Bank shipment day, huh? Yeah. Uh, bank shipment day? 
Once a month, we haul the bank shipment from Hooterville to Pixley. And on that day, we highball her straight through. Yeah. That bank shipment has to get on into Pixley on time. <laughs> hey, Arthur, did you... Oh, my ribs. <laughs> What's the matter? Uh, he, uh, uh, ate too many ribs. <laughs> yeah, ribs. <laughs> I, uh, suppose you probably carry armed guards on bank shipment day, huh? Armed guards? Shucks, no. Oh? Uh, carry guns yourselves? Floyd and me carry guns? Never. Hey, Arthur, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I better walk him around a little. It, he's had too much to eat. Excuse us, please. But, boys, here's the pie. Well, thank you kindly, but we've had plenty. <laughs> it was a wonderful meal. Yeah, wonderful. Nice, polite young fellows. Real gentlemen. I spotted that right away, Kate. <laughs> That's why I sold them the bill of goods to come up for lunch. Well, I'm glad you did. We don't uh, see too many nice-looking young men around here, do we, uh... Uh, Billy Joe? Gee, I don't know. How many's too many? <laughs> Spend the night here? I thought we were going into Pixley and knock over the bank. Give me that, you knucklehead. I'm sorry. Now look, we don't have to go into Pixley at all. All we gotta do is grab that bank shipment right off the train tomorrow. Yeah, but they say that the train doesn't stop when they carry So we'll stop it. Yeah, stop it. How? <laughs> Leave that to me, will ya? <laughs> Uncle Joe, you and your story. Wish we could stay overnight, Kate. Well, we got to get on into Pixley. Oh. That goes for me, too, Kate. Hey. I'll bet I could talk them young fellas into spending the night here. They're a pushover for my sales pitch. Well, fine, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, we go up the track and pile the railroad ties on it. <laughs> oh, we hadn't got over it yet, huh? No, not yet. Well, sir, boys, we've got the softest beds here you ever slept in. How about spending the night? Great. We'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Kate, I may take a couple of months off and go on the road. Why? I never realized what a dynamic salesman I am. People just can't say no to me. <laughs> Anyway, you fellas run a railroad. Kate and me have to waste her valuable time, come all the way into Hooterville here just to get to Pixley. Now, you listen, Joe. You know good and well we don't make no stops on bank shipment day. That's right. We highball her right straight through to Pixley. Highball it? Why, a turtle could beat that train into Pixley. <laughs> well, why don't you ride a turtle? I would, but Kate's on that train. I don't want to get there ahead of her. Uncle Joe, <laughs> would you stop teasing the boys so we can get going? Better do as the boss says. Boss? <laughs> Listen, you steam junkies. I'm the boss out at the Shady Rest Hotel, and don't you forget it. Uncle Joe? <laughs> Coming, Kate. <laughs> I'm the boss out there, but here in Hooterville, I kind of let her have her way. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing in the baggage car. Kate and me's got a lot of business at the bank. Three can carry that easier than two. Yeah. Why, shame on you. You expect Kate to get off the train and come out here and help you? <laughs> no, we expect you to help. Me? You boys know that I'm carrying two pounds of shrapnel from World War I. Well, take it out of your pocket, put it down, and help him with that chest. Oh, we can handle it, Kate. I was just teasing him. Kate? Joe says you got business at the Pixley Bank today. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get one of those improvement loans. I got an idea to improve the front porch. So have I. Keep him off of it. <laughs> Come on, Uncle Joe. I wouldn't talk about improvements if I ran a train like the Hooterville Grease Ball. Uncle Joe. That's Cannonball. And we're pulling out in one minute. We'll be aboard. Now just don't go too fast. Yeah, you might hit a chipmunk and to derail the whole train. <laughs> chipmunk. Uh, Uncle Joe, I'm kind of worried. Me too. I worry every time I ride this thing. No, not about the train. I was wondering if we did right leaving the girls alone with those two boys. 
You mean Arthur Gilroy and Lowell Reitmeyer? Uh-huh. Well, you can relax. I think they're two of the finest young men I've ever met. Oh, you think so? Kate, if there's one thing I am, it's a great judge of character. <laughs> it's in the eyes. Yeah, there's an old saying, eyes wide apart, goodness in the heart. Eyes close together, look out for stormy weather. Who said that? A very wise man. You? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Comes. This is it. Yeah, it. <laughs> Boy, it looks like somebody's piled some ties on the track. You gonna stop? Of course I'm gonna stop. Good, I can use them for firewood. What in the world? Probably hit a chipmunk. <laughs> well, Charlie and Floyd have never stopped here before. Well, there's chipmunks all up and down the line. <laughs> hey, we finally did it. We made the big time. We're getting held up. Boom. Come on. Now, let's get this straight, the whole bunch of you. One false move and I'll blow you all to bits. Yeah, to bits. <laughs> bits? Well, my goodness, there's nothing on Wait this train minute, that Kate. you... I'd better handle this. Now, see here, young fella, if this is your idea of a joke... Oh. I didn't say it was my idea of a joke. Kate, Kate you better handle this. Them's real killers if I ever seen one. <laughs> Boy, just a kidding, mister. All right, everybody into the baggage car. You heard him. You first, Mrs. Brat... Uh, lady. <laughs> Lowell Whitemeyer. Uh, Reitmeyer. <laughs> and that's Arthur. It isn't either. Uh, start moving. What do you know, Charlie? It's Lowell and Arthur. Howdy, boys. Holding up the train, huh? <laughs> we picked a nice day for it. <laughs> you two. Them's desperate criminals. You want to get us all killed? Oh, Uncle Joe, it's only Arthur and Lowell. The same two you liked so much a few minutes ago. Well, that was before I noticed their eyes were so close set. <laughs> See what I mean? What's the matter? You all deaf? Everybody into the baggage car. The silliest thing I ever heard of. Come on, move. Darn you, what'd you wear your glasses for? Well, because my mother makes me. You know that. <laughs> if I don't, I get a headache. All right. Everybody out of my way. We're gonna crack open the bank shipment. Yeah, the bank shipment. We had this caper case pretty darn good. Lowell, stop trying to talk like a roughneck. And take off that handkerchief. It looks terrible. Hey, leave that mask alone. It's all right, Arthur. It was killing my sinuses anyway. <laughs> Take yours off, too. We know who you are. Kate, don't get them riled up. I know these vicious characters. They just as soon kill you as look at you. Arthur and Lowell? I don't care if it is Arthur and Lowell. They've gone stark raving mad. Why don't you shut up? <laughs> Arthur, I wish you wouldn't be so hard on Uncle Joe's stomach. I've seen pin cushions treat a gentler. Talks too much. And get this straight, all of you. This is a holdup, not a clam bake. And I got a mighty itchy finger. Have you tried soaking it in Epsom salts? I had a brother-in-law once who... Quiet! <laughs> Lowell, get an axe and chop the lock off that bank shipment. Where am I going to get an axe? There's one right back there. <laughs> yeah, but it says use only in case of fire. <laughs> Would you like me to light a match? Not it legal it up. I'm asking for it, Kate. They'll cut you to ribbons. Uncle Joe, they'll poke you in the stomach again. Arthur, what do you need an axe for? Look. I ain't had a key since the trade rat run off with it four or five years ago. <laughs> Left us some real nice licorice drops in exchange. <laughs> Quiet! Come on, Lowell, get that box open. Let's get the money and get out of here. Okay, Chief. Wait. I, I'd like to offer you nice crooks a little advice. This box is federal property. 
And if you open it, it'll bring the FBI and the government bloodhounds howling on your trail. Remember, I'm, ju I'm just telling you this is a friend. And <laughs> Joe don't make friends too easy, does he? Joe, I know that's smart, but it'll take your mind off your tummy for a spell. Go ahead, I'll open the box. Hey, Arthur, look! <laughs> what kind of a bank shipment is this? Deposit slips, mostly. If you boys open an account, you'll have a lifetime supply. <laughs> but that wouldn't do us any good. We don't live around here. <laughs> What happened to the money? Money on this train? You mean we went to all this trouble for deposit slips? Why, heck no. There's blotters and checks, <laughs> ballpoint pens, paper clips. Lifetime supply of those, too. <laughs> Good going, Lowell. You made quite a haul. That ain't even counting the gorgonzola cheese and, and six sacks of fertilizer. <laughs> Arthur, you better face it. There's nothing worth taking in this whole neighborhood. I wouldn't say that, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him. He has the craziest sense of humor. <laughs> There's nothing that would interest a couple of important desperados like you. Kate Bradley, how can you stand there and fib like that? You with that big safe right behind the desk in your own hotel. <laughs> she keeps all the guest valuables there, you know. <laughs> Lloyd. Why don't I give you the combination and you can hand it over to him? You lock in the safe now? <laughs> <laughs> that does it. Take Charlie up front, get the ties off the track and get this heap started. We're heading back for the hotel. You want to see that Billy Joe again, huh? Billy Joe in a safe full of valuables. Come on, let's go. All right, everybody. Back in the passenger car. Lloyd, how do you do it? Do what? Your mouth isn't any bigger than anybody else's. How do you manage to get both feet in it? Okay, come on, come on. Come on, move it. You too, ma'am. Come on. Okay, now everybody follow me up to the hotel. Come on, come on, move. All right, all right. When I say move, I mean move. All right, all right. I don't know what's come over that young fella. He was so nice this morning. Well, he's a regular Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. What's-his-name. Hyde. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Charlie, hold it. Hey. I told you no more funny stuff. Get up out of there. All right. All right. Uh, come on, everybody follow me up to the hotel. Yeah, hotel. <laughs> Lowell, carry this for me, will you? Oh, sure, Mrs. Bradley. <laughs> can I carry a gun for you? Oh, no, it's all right. I can manage. Yeah, manage. <laughs> nothing, Lowell, nothing. <laughs> Hi, Arthur. Hi, Billy. All right, everybody inside. Come on, come on. What are you doing, Arthur? Oh. You'll see, doll. Where are you going? I'll start my mail. Come on, Floyd. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? We're going to put the grocers in the kitchen. That's all right, son. We'll be right back. <laughs> now, what are you doing? Well, I got groceries, too. <laughs> Give me that. <clears throat> Get that out in the kitchen. Yes, sir. And see that you come right back. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, don't try anything funny, any of you. Arthur, what are you doing with the gun? Oh, he and Babyface Whitemire held up the train. No, no, right, Meyer. All right. All right. Shut up, you nut. Where's your gun? <laughs> I left it in the sack. In the sack? Yeah, yeah sack. sack. Hey, look what I found. <laughs> I don't try anything else. Buster, no, no. Now you listen, Arthur. You stop poking Uncle Joe so hard or I'm going to take a stick to you. <laughs> What's the matter with everybody around here? Can't you see we're desperate criminals? You're all in danger. Look, this is a real gun and I'm going to blow a hole on the first creep who gets out of line. Mom, you know what this is? This is a perfect case of paranoid schizophrenia. Well, don't call him any names. You're looking at a mad dog killer. Shut up or you'll get bit. Okay. Now, where's the safe? <gasps> oh, no. Arthur, you stay away from here. Uh -huh. Why, Betty Joe, what's the matter with you? There's nothing in the safe. Oh, oh, oh. that won't work, Mrs. Bradley. 
I wasn't born yesterday. Yeah, his birthday is June the 10th. Come on, get out of the way. Arthur, please don't. Come on, move. Hey, it's open. We're in luck. Yeah, in luck. <laughs> Joe Bradley. I'm sorry, Mom. Hey, those must be pretty valuable cats. <laughs> How many times have I told you that the safe is no place for Miranda? But that's where she always likes to have her kittens. <laughs> what a kooky joint. <laughs> Posit slips and then cats. What are we going to do now, Arthur? Well, I'm not licked yet. Come on, everybody out of here. Out along the counter. Come on, move. Yeah, the counter. Come on. Line up out along the counter, Mrs. Bradley. There's got to be something valuable around here. I've got an old army cot Benedict Arnold slept in. <laughs> Come on! Empty the pockets and dump the valuables on the counter. Oh, my goodness, look at the time. Come on, girls. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who said you could leave? Well, it's, it's 5 o'clock. We have to start fixing dinner. Didn't you hear what I said about the valuables? Oh, they'll still be here after dinner. <laughs> You're welcome to stay, Arthur. Yeah, but I've got a gun. You can't just walk. Where are you going? Well, I thought I'd help him set the table. It's the least I can do. <laughs> wow, we got to get some wood on the fire. Come on, Floyd. Yeah, the baller probably is getting thirsty, too. Yeah. Come back here, both of you. Oh, don't worry about a thing. We'll be back for dinner. <laughs> Doesn't anybody listen to me around here? Hey, where do you think you're going? No place. I was just opening the door to let in a little fresh air for you, not for me. God, uh, get lost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, more dessert, anybody? Mm. No, thanks. Thank it's good. Well, I think you can clear off, girls. Help you, Billy. Yeah, Billy. I mean, Bobby. <laughs> I uh, think that the two of us can handle this alone. Oh, I know, but uh, why not let the girls help us? <laughs> um, you're right, Lowell. Let, let the girls help. <laughs> Mama, what are we going to do about Uncle Joe? Oh, uh, uh, keep his um, uh, dish warm in the oven. And if he's to be found, Betty Joe will find him. Right this way, fellas. <laughs> You know, Kate, they're not bad boys. Of course they're not. All they need is jobs to keep them out of mischief. Mother? Mother? I think Uncle Joe's here. I saw a lantern coming across the meadow. It must be Uncle Joe. Now, where could that man have been? Must have been important for him to miss a meal. Follow me, officer. You better have your gun out. These are desperate criminals. They've escaped. Uncle Joe. They've taken Billy and Bobby as hostage. Uncle Joe. How'd it happen? Joe, the boys are in the kitchen. I hope you got them tied up tight. They're a couple of real mad dog killers. Officer. Trooper Benson, ma'am. This gentleman flagged me down in the county road. Yeah, that's Joe Carson. That's C-A-R-S-O-N, in case the newspapers ask. <laughs> I escaped from the bandits at the risk of my life. They're not bandits. Arthur. Lowell, come in here, please. Better have your gun ready. They're vicious. <laughs> Don't let those aprons fool you. Arrest them. The boys or the girls? <laughs> Officer, I I I'm awfully sorry that Uncle Joe sent you on this wild goose chase, but these boys are not criminals. They held up a train, didn't they, Charlie? Yeah, for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five. <laughs> Officer, won't you sit down and have some food? No, thank you, ma'am. I have to get back to my car. It's quite a little walk from here. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. They had a gun. I got a black and blue stomach to prove it. <laughs> well, Arthur, let's get back to the dishes. Yeah, it, dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, what's the matter with everybody? Them boys had guns. You saw them. As a matter of fact, I got them. I'm going to have this one for dessert. Dessert? <laughs> Best liquors I've tasted in a long time. <laughs>
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.